Biden's campaign teasing a rollout on climate policy with a focus on finding middle ground. But that idea is not sitting well with the party's left wing. Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, one of the architects of the Green New Deal, calls Biden's proposal a, quote, deal breaker for progressives, tweeting, quote, there is no middle ground with climate denial and delay. Blaming blue collar Americans as the main opponents to bold climate policy is gas lobbyist 101. Let's bring in Boyd Matheson, former chief of staff to Republican Senator Mike Lee from Utah, and Dave Brown, former senior advisor and committee counsel to, to Democratic Senator Patty Murray from Washington. Gentlemen, thank you both for being here. And I'd like to begin with a look at the real clear politics average of polls on the Democratic field. You can see here the former vice president is far and away in the lead right now. My question is, and Dave, I'll begin with you. If the Democrats are determined to take down the president in 2020, how does taking down the current leader help the overall goal, the leader in the field? Well, first, I think it's a healthy debate to have about climate change, and I'm glad we're having it, and I hope the rest of the country will tune in, because this is, as the Vice President, Vice President Biden has said, this is an existential threat. It's a threat to our, my generation, it's a threat to my kids' generation, so I'm glad we're having the debate. If you look at the polling, particularly the recent Manmouth poll that came out uh, looking at New Hampshire primary voters, 68 percent of Democratic voters in that state said the single most important thing for them when looking at a Democratic candidate and the eventual nominee is, can he or or she beat Donald Trump. In terms of issue tests and, and whether or not they cared whether if they agreed with every issue that nominee stood for, uh, polled far, far less. And so I do think there's an interesting political context to all of this, which is the vice president, Vice President Biden, clearly the front runner. He's polling very well in New Hampshire. He's polling very well in Iowa. And Democratic voters, first and foremost, care about beating the president. That said, if you look at polls, aside from health care, climate change is up there as a principal issue that Democratic primary voters care about. And, boy, climate change is a very real issue, especially for Democrats. Is Ocasio-Cortez forcing Biden to the left, and at what cost? Well, I think one of the challenges is I think most Americans agree that we do need to have a serious conversation about climate, about stewardship of the land. The problem is, is that they're pushing so far to the left in terms of how to do that. Uh, the big challenge is that so often they're getting these solutions that are what I call 20 percent solutions. Less than 20 percent of the people want the government, for example, to take over the economy in a way just to fix the climate. Uh, same thing applies with health care. Everybody wants uh, cheap, affordable health care. Uh, Nobody wants the government to really run it. And so I think that's going to be the challenge. And I think what Vice President Biden has done is try to say that, hey, a lot of these proposals that are coming from the far left are for the kiddies table. Uh, I want to deal with the big issues. I want to take on the president in 2020. Uh, I want to get to the moral core of America. What's, what is the essence of America? And so I think that's where the debate's going to be. Uh, the socialism stuff always sounds really good in the primaries in the spring, but Democrats and independents know that that doesn't fly in a fall election. And, and as David rightly said, they want to win. And so I think you're going to see a very interesting tug and pull as this continues on. Well, primary and caucus season is always brutal for the party that doesn't have an incumbent. They beat each other up and then attempt to come together. But the DNC chair is calling for his party members to unite now. Take a look at this recent quote from Tom Perez. We know that there is so much more that unites us as Democrats than what divides us. Nothing unites us more than our shared commitment to beating Trump. Boyd, I'd like to begin with you on this one. If Dems can bring each other together in a common goal, couldn't it be a formidable force against President Trump? Yeah, I, I think that is the key. The, the unity message is going to be very important for Democrats as they roll through the process. If, if they don't learn anything from 2016 uh, and beat each other up the way Republicans did, uh, that, that will say a lot about the Democratic Party. Uh, but I think the thing they have to be very careful of uh, is that in the rush for these 22 candidates now uh, to get the nomination, they're all going so far that they're making everything a crisis. We have a, we have a climate crisis. We have an energy crisis. We have an opioid crisis. Uh, and the American people get exhausted because they can see that for many of these candidates, these are manufactured crises so that they can raise money and try to get some notoriety and get some momentum with a viral video, a social media moment that can propel them to the top of the pack uh, when it comes to the debate. So there's, it's a really tricky needle to thread, uh, but it's one that the Democrats are going to have to do to unite and actually give the president a run for his money in 2020. Dave, how do you think Democrats are going to be able to, quote unquote, unite when you have someone who's not even on the ticket going after the person who's leading in the polls right now? How is that even possible, especially when you're talking about an issue like climate change? 
Yeah, well, first, let me just say on, on the, the climate change point, this isn't a manufactured crisis. It's kind of a, a, a real, very real crisis. The National Climate Assessment published by this government said that. Um, to your question, look, I think there's a big difference between the, the Twitter universe and, and what pundits like us say on, on air uh, and what's actually happening on the ground in the early primary states and, and when candidates are actually talking to voters. And, and I suspect that were we to be privy to those kitchen table conversations, there is already a vast consensus among Democratic primary voters that we are united. We are united in, in, our, in our belief that this president needs to be denied a second term. And I think 2018 also offers a really helpful roadmap of the types of issues that brought us together. Healthcare as a very good example. Healthcare really won Democrats the House in 2018, and that continues to be such an important issue in 2020. And so I think you see broad consensus forming. That said, I think debate is healthy, and I think having a conversation about climate change and whether it's the Green New Deal or something perhaps slightly more centrist, uh, you're defining a contour of options. And, and of course, you know, you, you govern in, in prose, but you you uh, you campaign in politics, right? So there's there's going to have to be a little push and shove and, and compromise when it comes to the actual policies of this. But I'm glad we're having the debate. I think it's healthy. Well, thank you so much, Boyd Matheson, Dave Brown. Appreciate your time. Thank Thanks, you, Alicia.